today. And we are the green team, and we are going to be presenting our software design from Monarch Press, which is a product that will make the lives of anyone hoping to deliver engaging news media content much easier. And there physically with you, you have Corey O'Donnell, Edward Kennedy, and Jonathan Perez. And shooting over across the interwebs, you have me, Diamond Wiggins, and Eric Witcher. All right, so over the years, there has been an uprising of uh, digital media consumption. And there are a lot of people who get their news online now. And in order to hold the attention spans of those readers, there needs to be captivating writing and high quality digital media and interactive content production. And because we as you know, human beings, we love things to be pretty and flashy and animated, you know, Everyone loves the movies with a bunch of explosions in them because they keep our attention. And we don't need explosions on a website, but they do need to keep your attention with the uh, interesting content. All right. And student journalists, they have a lack of technical training for the required skill sets of web development. They simply just don't develop those skills over the course of, you know, getting the degree, most of them anyway. And to make up for that, modern university news organizations use complex digital publishing platforms or content management systems. Um, and they have to use these systems to try to integrate rich media, you know, throughout the website. All right. And our case study, the Mason Crown, which is, you know, our student university newspaper here, they're no different. You know, they want to deliver relevant and dynamic content to increase the engagement of their readers. And we initially set out to do this with uh, just trying to elevate their climate change stories. But now we've brought that up a little bit, and we want to give them a platform, any other university newspapers, a platform to, you know, elevate all the stories that they make. And, you know, our tool, Monarch Press, would be, <clears throat> excuse me, our tool, Monarch Press, would be, um, factor that would help them, you know, present their content in a captivating way. All right, so the Mason Crown writers and editors, they need a product that, with the features that are going to be necessary to compete with other news organizations. And this is a little bit difficult because more prominent news organizations like, you know, CNN, MSNBC, um, they're going to have you know, an abundant amount of resources to stay globally and digitally connected. And the Mason Crown needs to compete with these news organizations while not necessarily having some of the same advantages that other news outlets have. And here is the current process flow for the Mason Crown. And what, what's really going on here is primarily after they decide to run a story, content is aggregated. And that consists of interviews being done and online research. And then that content is printed to the university newspaper and then pushed to the university news media website. Now, what's, what's wrong here is that while that content that's, you know, that, that'll suffice for the university newspaper to be printed there, more needs to be done to it before it goes to the website. And it needs to be pr presented in, you know, a visually appealing way. And, you know, we could clean that up by, you know, having better social media integration, um, whitelisted Twitter feeds, uh, guest columnists, reputation-based discussion, and, you know, a framework for those continually, continuously contributing, uh, a framework for them to uh, easily keep uh, updating the stories and the articles that they write. And here is the solution process flow with uh, Monarch Press, our product. And as you can see, uh, nothing really changes up until the point where it's time for the content to be pushed to the university newspaper website. So, you know, the, the content that's gathered with, you know, online research and the interview, the interviewees, um, that's still fine to be pushed in the newspaper. But when it's time 
to uh, get that content to the website, you know, we need our product, which is going to have a content management system so that you can have a, a page layout engine to, uh, you know, dynamically create a new web page you might need for a story, um, a news aggregation, aggregation algorithm, uh, interdepartment discussion forum, and a data visualization framework. When you order under university academic, I'm looking at the display here, and the print thing is so small. Community. It looks yeah, university on academic. This, <laughs> it looks really good on this screen on the record. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's just that one. That <laughs> doesn't look like um, and actually, I, I was going to mention that next. Um, Monarch Press, uh, our product, will be able to take advantage of the intellectual hub that a university provides um, because, you know, we have a lot of different professors and researchers here, you know, and a bunch of different, uh, you know, I don't know what the word is, but a bunch of different professors that, you know, are do well in whatever it is that they do, you know. Okay, but, uh, climate change. but they're not, in other words, you're not, not filling up a web page that they go look at according to this time. Is that uh, correct? They have the right well, <clears throat> uh, What was that last part? What did you say? They have their own hook. Monarch Press is your your stuff. Okay, that's fine. And it produces mm -hmm. the university newspaper website or, or fills it properly, okay, for the common end user to play with. But mm -hmm. this diagram shows the academic community uh, accessing your product rather than going right to the website. Is that the way this is envisioned, or is the website right. made for... God and country, and then this diagram is wrong. <clears throat> right. That uh, the university academic community, professors like yourself or anyone doing research, will be able to just like you know journalists contribute and you know provide content through Monarch Press to the website themselves. Um, so I mean that's that's what we envision ah, for that there. So I'm not sure if I answered your question. It's an end. It's an end. Okay, then. Yeah, but looking at the other one, the end user then is backwards. Is that right? Because they're getting stuff out. Oh, yes. Huh? Yeah, this yeah, the arrow. Okay, yeah, okay. Oh, that, okay. That last arrow is wrong. Okay. Oh, yeah, I apologize. No, I don't apologize. We make mistakes. It's not a big deal. All right. And now Eric is going to talk to all of you about uh, our major functional components. So, uh, by and large, the biggest and most influential legacy component that we're working with is a WordPress managed website uh, that the Mason Crown is using right now to deliver their content. Um, we're going to hey, build Eric. on top of that framework. Eric. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. We had Sorry, a we frozen picture of Diamond's sour looking face so i wanted your face up on the screen you ran off all the other people <laughs> <laughs> okay now please continue okay um all right so saying that the largest and most influential uh, legacy component that we're that we're dealing with is a wordpress managed uh website that the mason crown is currently using to deliver their content our our product is going to build on top of that framework so that the Mason Crown editors and writers do not have to relearn um, entirely a, an entirely new content management system. Um, we want to build on top of that. Uh, the most important components that that Google has requested from us are uh, drag and drop editing capabilities for articles and blog posts and um, long format pieces, and and also to be able to edit themes and page templates in a similar way. They would like to have dynamic uh, feeds from social media and be able to integrate um, aggregated news feeds that are relevant to the stories that, uh, so that, I'm sorry, to have a custom news feed that is relevant to a story. So say a news sidebar or uh, say relevant stories at the bottom of a page once you're done reading a story, you can then the uh, other relevant stories, either from the Mason Crown or from other uh, news organizations. Um, then they, of course, are interested in those flashy, interactive uh, data visualization 
um, other video and media elements that are going to capture people's attention and keep people on the site. So we need to integrate those things in a way that's aesthetically pleasing and works with the flow of the article so that they uh, both keep people's attention but also don't stop people from reading the rest of the story. Um, and then we're going to provide management features for uh, the, some of the community interactions, guest contributions, uh, managing our uh, social media feeds and, um, and the other features that we implement there. Uh, this is our diagram of the things that I've just described. On the right in the giraffe gray looking box is the existing Mason Crown deployment. Um, it's a, a basic WordPress setup. It runs on uh, either a LAMP or a LEMP stack uh, with an Apache or Nginx server, PHP, uh, MySQL, and is delivering their existing website. Then our product is over here on the left in a nice blue colorful box and we'll be interfacing with their existing WordPress installation primarily via the WordPress API, although there will be external calls uh, via Twitter search API, um, uh, probably an OAuth uh, social, um, social login for some of those things. And through those calls through WordPress, uh, we will likely use that existing stack to deliver new areas or new widgets and components uh, through their website. Um, our, our roles are both on the left and the right. Uh, we have editors, journalists, uh, guest contributors, and bloggers. Um, now that I'm looking at this again, we do not have an admin on this page, but we do have admin, uh, user stories, and elements to manage some of these things. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, so talking about our solution design, we touched on some of these things already. Um, we're working on top of WordPress, which is open source. Our product will also be open source and available to other university news organizations who would like to integrate it into uh, their content management system. WordPress is uh, very commonly utilized. Um, so I already hit on some of the things that uh, Jubal and the Mason Crown would like to see uh, in discussing their climate change problem. We've talked about having living documents um, that can be updated and changed and dynam dynamically grow. And a couple of the features that we want to see along with that are users being able to sign up for uh, notifications via favoriting a page and having that add to the user profile. And then when the page is updated, um, it can you know grab all the people who have favorited that page and shoot them a notification. Um, then content aggregation, uh, indicated news feed, uh, adding those interactive content elements, maps, graphs, um, other data visualization items, and um, and readers being able to interact and be more engaged with the content that the Mason Crown has to offer. So our hardware requirements right now, we do not have a lot to talk about. The Mason Crown is running on a uh, GoDaddy managed um, managed WordPress account. It's shared hosting plan. Uh, they have, um, according to Jugal, uh, roughly 8.7k unique monthly visitors and about 25,000 monthly monthly page views. Um, so there are volume limits on their GoDaddy hosting. Um, I believe that they can they can hit about three times their current traffic before they'd have to upgrade to the next plan. Um, but upgrading should not be a huge deal. They would just have to upgrade the plan and GoDaddy can bump them up to a, a uh, bigger shared observer with more bandwidth and more RAM. Okay. Um, 
So as we start talking about software requirements, um, user interfaces, the biggest, the biggest, most important elements are the drag and drop editing interface for stories and templates and themes. And um, in those elements, being able to integrate the, the interactive elements and, and some of the content widgets that we've discussed. Um, the storage and database will be used for storing some of these customizations that we're discussing and um, we'll have to cache some of the feeds we're aggregating. The Twitter search API has rate limiting, so we'll have to go out and um, search those things occasionally and uh, cache the data. Uh, and then we'll have some user profile data, favorites, notifications, and comments. Um, The interface, legacy interfaces, uh, primarily WordPress database and API. Um, it is relatively robust and provides uh, quite a variety of ways to hook into the pages being served. Um, we'll also be uh, utilizing the Twitter API for some of our social media elements and um, probably uh, try to integrate some a lot of. Uh, uh, for social media sharing. And back again with our algorithm, the biggest thing here is drag and drop editing. It's gonna be the biggest problem to solve, the most complex thing. And uh, then other than that, we have a variety of things that uh, will need to be rendered and uh, little chunks of HTML that'll have to be passed back to pages. And uh, our feed aggregation. We'll have to uh, grow, go out and grab the things that we need to grab and cache them and then serve them up as, again, chunks of web pages to, to our templates. Uh, the last thing here, these are just WordPress requirements. Um, we've already talked about them in the functional components. Um, we probably will not interface with these things directly as long as the Mason Crown is using a, uh, a shared hosting, uh, managed hosting server, but uh, we do need to keep in mind that uh, we will be dealing with PHP, uh, writing a WordPress plugin, and um, there are some you know, technical limitations that do come along with working with the MySQL database and you know, running on these platforms. Um, now I'm going to discuss, uh, briefly discuss how the Monarch Press is going to uh, interface with commercial off-the-shelf softwares and legacy systems. Um, the way that Monarch Press is going to interface with WordPress API is the, it's going to send it function hooks, and it's pretty much just going to get back the requested action of those function hooks. It's pretty cut and dry. The way Monarch Press works with social media APIs is, first, uh, Monarch Press has to send out... Um, OAuth ticket or tokens so that they have uh, the credentials to be able to respond back and whatnot. Uh, they're going to send back or they're going to send search criteria uh, using the REST um, the REST transfer protocol. It's pretty much just an uh, architecture for design network applications, and it's going to get a response back in the form of JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. Uh, it's pretty important. It, it's pretty easy for humans to read and write, and it's easy for computers to uh, parse and, and generate as well. Discus is the third interface. It's the current comment system that the Mason Crown currently uses. It is going to um, expect JSON data from Monarch Press, and it's going to respond back with just API responses, email notifications, and comments for archi ar archiving. Uh, WordPress social kind of works the same way as social media. Uh, it's got to get the OAuth stuff. And it's just going to respond back with user profiles and friends lists after the search criteria is received. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to send you to Diamond to talk about agile development. All right. So we decided that, you know, when it comes time to code this thing up, that we're going to go with uh, some agile development. And this is because, you know, we need to be flexible to the needs of university news media outlets as we're stepping through 
you know, each iteration in our development process. And this is, you know, going to be a product that many people, many people are going to uh, interface with, like I mentioned before, the university academic community and, you know, editors and journalists. And we'll also be, you know, prioritizing product features and maximizing collaboration by, you know, embracing each other's experiences. And here is our work breakdown. So, you know, we have user interfaces and, you know, our commercial off the shelf and legacy interfaces, data storage. And then, you know, we have a, a bunch of uh, algorithms that we have. And for the user interfaces, we have readers, contributors, journalists, editors, and administrators. And for the interfaces, as uh, Jonathan just went over with all of you, uh, we have the WordPress plugin API, the Twitter API, Discuss, and uh, some type of OAuth or WordPress social login. For data storage, we're going to have you know images and videos and interactive elements, and you know page layout engine data that we're going to be having to store. And then for our algorithms, I won't go over all of these, but some of the most uh, important ones are, you know, the content display and content editing, the Twitter and news feed display, the Twitter and news aggregation, and also, you know, content visibility for dynamic permissions. Well, I'm going to go over, um, we, uh, we kind of split all the user stories up between five different user roles. We have the reader, um, contributor, journalist, editor, and admin. Uh, the, the first one would be the reader stories. They can view like the Mason Crown's content, such as images and videos, and the, the interactive and digital visualization elements. Uh, they can receive notifications about the favorite content or articles that they want to get uh, notifications if things change such as they edit the article or someone comments on it. Uh, they could also share the article on Facebook or Twitter or something if they want to. They can also comment and discuss the article underneath it and the readers can also view user profiles, they can view the other people's favorite articles, and also edit their own favorite articles if they please. Uh, the, one of the, the algorithms to go along with the reader is to display all the, the content. The, it collects things such as the user agent, the screen resolution, and the user preferences, and then it takes that information and then puts it into a template and then renders the HTML and loads the widgets such as news and Twitter aggregations alongside it. The media element display algorithm is used to uh, display all the interactive diagrams and stuff. It, it uses the type of, it, it looks up the type of media the user is using such as a smartphone, tablet, desktop and it will adjust the rendered size of the interactive material so it's more compatible and looks good on all devices. The favorite notification widget, it uses information, the user's information, so it can display whether the user has already favorited or an option so they can favorite it. And once the user, if the user were to click on the the favorite icon, it'll pretty much toggle it. So it'll allow them to click it again and unfavor it so they won't receive notifications. The, the tweet, the Twitter feed, it, this will pull tweets from a whitelisted and predetermined hashtags and display it in the scrolling feed next to the article. Uh, it will, um, it'll periodically look up and see if the cache is out of date and then recache it. If what defines out of date? Defines the date. What defines out of date? Uh, it, probably every single time it looks at it, probably, if it's not the current time, it'll look at it again. Can you show the purpose of the cache right mm -hmm. now? Yeah, I think so. Do you want me to answer that? Yeah, yes. Okay. Um, I. I actually, I'm trying to remember the exact rate limiting number. 
a request that we can do to the search API. For Twitter? Uh, I could look it up. I don't uh, have it on the top of my head. I believe the, um, the Twitter limit is, I believe, 1,000 every 15 minutes for the free developer account. Okay. And yeah, that, that sounds about right. Um, so we should not be anywhere near that limit. Um, uh, I mean, for, I don't know, Twitter does move relatively quickly. Um, so it's something that we'll want to refresh uh, more often than, say, perhaps a news feed where, you know, news articles are not necessarily posted, you know, like millions of tweets a second are. Um, Story tweeting second. Well, so a Twitter feed display, like we can get rid of older tweets relatively uh, indiscriminately. Um, you know, this isn't going to be the sort of thing where a user can scroll back the days and days of uh, history on the Twitter feed on our on our page. They're you know they're just going to be able to you know click and see you know X number of recent tweets and uh, you know just see what's going on in the you know, the most recent um, tweets from our, our whitelisted users. Okay. And the news feed display is very similar to the Twitter, except for instead of pulling tweets, it's pulling different news articles from whether it's um, through Monarch Pro or uh, Mason Crown itself or other um, news companies. And it'll display alongside next to the article. Uh, the contributor user role, they can do everything a reader can do, but they can also post new blogs or guest articles. They can edit and submit revi like revisions for existing content, so if someone realized, oh, their article's wrong, they can suggest a change to it. They can also post to the Twitter feed by using a predetermined hashtag that will update alongside the article. And I'm going to pass it off to Eric to talk about the journalist's role. You are muted. You muted, Eric. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> it's just a talking thing. I thought you, know, you sat down too soon. We have more to look at. But, um, all right, so a uh, journalist, uh, again, can do everything that a reader contributed to do. It's, higher permissions level. Um, journalists can also create new content items, news articles or things like uh, our climate change articles that might be an ongoing or living document that is updated over time. Um, journalists may have also have the ability to modify appearance of certain approved template elements to, to give them uh, the ability to customize page appearance. The example that Jubal has used that he wanted to see was say, uh, being able to add a hero image across the top of a page. Um, uh, you have to and at the individual articles? I mean, do you want someone who's that? coming in and filming with somebody else's? No, they can only uh, edit, well, the, for a journalist's permission, they can only edit uh, articles that they are the author of. And uh, journalists. <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure something like that so we didn't have uh, but I, I think the common you, man wandering in and changing everything. But you may want well, to give permission to another journalist, you know, so I think there does need to be some type of uh, system for <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah, we have a process in place to allow you to tag like yes. other contributors. Editor. Now, and the, one of the user stories Multiple I Multiple authors on a story? Yeah. So um, you do need some kind of content management element. But the other thing here on, on the journalist thing, the case, I was, I've was i been waiting for this. One of the things a journalist should be able to do is identify the keywords that are going to be used. Mm, okay. Oh, so add tags to their own story? Yes. And then okay. what you can do is when the reader sees the story, they'll be able to hover over the title or something to be able to see what those specific tags are, but somebody's got to build them. Okay. That's a good point. Um, we, we have not actually listed all of our user stories on these slides, just 
for the sake of brevity. Oh, here, we'll and, and, yes. <laughs> um, but uh, I also wanted to say, as far as editing goes, uh, journalists and contributors, at least as we've currently got it uh, set up and we have been talking about it, all of their submitted changes have to go through an editor. So when they when they make some changes and uh, say, okay, I'm ready to go, uh, they submit it and an editor gets a notification and reviews those changes and then can hit, hit yes or no on publishing that to go public. Uh, to real prevent. News. Sorry, yes. what? Like a real news record. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was to prevent the, the journalists from defacing the site or, you know. <laughs> so do I need to talk about 27 or do we sort of already cover that? Yeah. I want to beat the horse. Yeah. 63. Oh, we got to go faster. Let's go faster. All right. So Twitter feed uh, the editor can do all the lower privilege things, drag and drop page builder, um, can create or modify a new site theme or uh, uh, duplicate the site theme. Or... <laughs> okay, next slide. We're trying to catch up here. All right. You want me to just skip um, over the no. editing stuff? No. Yeah, the SU content editing is the same as normal content editing, except it doesn't need editor approval. They can just okay. so apply. This, this is the administrator of the system. Uh, well, this is the editor. There's another admin role that's separate. This is essentially pseudo on the admin. Okay. 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 Um, submission approval rejection is just like it sounds. Articles go to editors and have to be approved or rejected. There's also a rejection with comments, so they can tell why it was rejected. Sure. Yeah, that was that one. Um, content visibility or deletion, hide or uh, make public existing stories, and uh, or delete them altogether. Good. Uh, Newsfeed aggregation, search through the Mason Crown, or search, you know, say, Associated Press articles and grab. You know, grab a title and grab the first line and you know cache it and um, does it make some crowd search have a by, of them now? Uh, Jubal, I believe, did say that they had something with the Associated Press, but I don't think they use it. Okay, yeah, it's something that <laughs> uh, the management is. Uh, simply specifying uh, keywords. You go to the next slide. It's uh, displaying the keywords, uh, giving the option to delete, letting letting the the uh, editors uh, enter a you know new keyword or something that they want a, a news feed to be searched by. Twitter feed. Add a add a white uh, add a user to the whitelist. Add a hashtag. Remove a user. I'm having trouble keeping up with you. It's not remove a user. Remove a user account. Yeah, well, yeah. Remove a, a <laughs> Twitter user. Like Godfather, but they aren't really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, and then. <laughs> The admin can do anything anybody else can do, and uh, we'll have um, have access to adjust user roles and permissions. And uh, you know, who would that be now? Just I mean, this is for the monarch thing that you're doing. So who would be that now? Because I'm just well, curious. I'm not. Maybe we don't right know. now we, we don't have a specific name. Uh, no, right now it appears that they have one account set up for. Their WordPress site and everybody logs into the one account Jesus. and posts their crap. It's it's not so set up. It's not set up so well right now. Oh yeah, they're gonna be hacked every three days. They have some issues. Oh, they are. <laughs> That's something weird. 
Boy, that's the most important Talking about yeah. our story is we cannot be hacked. Yeah. <laughs> we, went, we went to the page yesterday and that someone wiped all the code off. There's just random characters and stuff. It was just, it was oh, not pretty. Sad. And her daddy doesn't want to put a proper prop up. And uh, I think Corey's going to uh, do this one. For the site map, you'll have, from the main page, you have four different options you can go to. You can go to an article, which has all of our the interactive data, the comments, the, the aggregated Twitter feed and news feed. You can go to a user profile, which they, if you're logged in, you could edit your preferences and your, your current favorites and also adjust keywords because we were thinking about doing we could aggregate all the news articles, get notifications if you just wanted an article about climate. Any article they write about climate, you would get notified for. Um, then the other one, uh, the third option would be to enter something new. So a contributor can enter a guest article or a blog, or an editor can actually create the new article <coughs> select from a template. Or, well, if they select a template, they'll still get brought to the drag and drop editor or they can just go straight to the drag and drop editor, which in the end is just, you can drag text boxes and title. But you're gonna have to have a login system here so that you yeah. can differentiate between various people. Yeah, login's gotta be right under the main page. Main page. Main page. Well, yeah. Actually on the main page, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Okay. And the, the point then is, so let's, let's say I'm Dr. Weigel and I have just finished my visualization course project grading. <laughs> And I want to now make that available to the Mason Crown. Which page would I be on for that? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I need like that, that role too. Okay. Okay. Um, and I need, so I think we're missing that user story, set of user stories. And we need to create the pages for those types of submissions, which would then mean that there needs to be a notification algorithm associated to notify the editor or whomever that new content has been yeah. provided. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the editor could then add the hashtag mm -hmm. to that document so that it would dynamic. Now, that's my question. Does it dynamically get populated to the Monarch Press um, article, or does the editor have to then physically, manually add it? The editor passes judgment on it, so there's got to be some yay yeah, or you got to have somebody that says, yeah, that's a quality, and yes, it is the associated, and this is the hashtag with which it should be associated, but they, but what I'm asking is, does Monarch Press then recognize that a new hashtag, a new something with the corresponding hashtag for that article exists and automatically renders it within the page? Or are all of these new associations for the page, such as your tweets and your news articles, are they all pass judgment on before okay. the editor or they mm -hmm. dynamically add it? Is it a manual or dynamic process? I want the, the um, answer, one word or the other. Probably dynamic. Probably dynamic. That's not one word. Dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't seen that throughout the presentation. Okay. Okay. That hasn't been clarified for me. Okay. So we need to... Well. I mean, I would just say that pulling in, like pulling in from a Twitter whitelist still will be dynamic, but the point of having a, a whitelist is to limit it to trusted user accounts. Yeah, but I'm talking about faculty contributed information. Okay, so for, expect, like for right, an article. Right, or a visualization diagram, or an interactive okay. graphical suite. Um, you know, so when I, when you guys were discussing this, my first thought was the, throughout the document, someone, either the journalist or the editor, can go in and highlight words and hashtag them. So that if I find a news feed with that hashtag, the news feed gets approved by the editor. The next time somebody renders that page, wherever that word was highlighted, that would come in oh, okay. and be associated there because it relates there. Okay. Okay. So, you know, if you think about it, if I'm reading this article, <clears throat> I'm going to start off with 
the history of Norfolk, okay? And then it's gonna go into the areas that were built first. And then it's gonna go into the change of the tide, tidal system and erosion of which areas, or the addition of new port facilities that you know, change the ecology, I, you know. And so the article is going to progress, right? It's going to mm-hmm. start with one topic. It's going to move on and move on and move on. So as a journalist, I want to be able to say in paragraph four, that's where I'm talking about the ecosystem. Yeah. And so I want to be able to tag that paragraph with ecosystem. And then if it's searched for on CNN and it finds a good article about Norfolk and our ecosystem, it would put it right there at that area so that it just makes sense yeah. to the reader. Yeah. I don't just want this stuff showing up anywhere, right? Yeah. It, it's got to be mm-hmm. associated. But each thing that the tweet feed, I agree, that should be dynamic by, by trusted yeah. people. Contributors. But the other things that I pull in or that are contributed by the community or by faculty or by students, um, that should be edited. Mm-hmm. And then they don't know the associated hashtags. So somebody's got to then tag each of them appropriately. So Norfolk ecosystem, mm-hmm. so that it's rendered appropriately on the page. Yeah. That's so that's what I was envisioning. Okay. okay. That makes sense. Okay. Did you over the admin stuff? Uh, and then we have one option for the admin, or one page for the admin. Okay. And I'm going to pass it to Ed. So we have uh, a high level, uh, you know, main um, yeah, table. Yeah, I can see that really well. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, that we're looking at in Davies, you know, we're looking at user, um, you know, article, blog, uh, you know, privileges, roles, um, you know, all these at a high level are what, you know, are the basis of what is needed for. Uh, what we're going to be working with. You're missing, missing the whole hashtag aspect. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's gone. That's not here. Yeah. Here you go, next one. Yeah. Um, and, and so here it is, is kind of the relation of, of, of what all those, all those tables will be doing. Um, like for a user, you have a role, um, like user role, which is kind of a join table. That you know, a user could have many roles. Um, and so you have a role that and then you have a role uh, that your table that is role word, <laughs> role privilege. That's another join table that you know a role could have many privileges. And so a user going back, you know, a user a certain role could do many functions like this, like, like an admin. The user could have many roles. That's that's correct. Hey, hey. Your next one. Uh, yeah. And so Let's go back. Okay. Thomas. Why do many of you all really big on name convention? How many here are you using user underscore ID and here are you using a different convention for name squared? Each following word is capitalized. <laughs> here it goes again. Name convention is not consistent. Yeah, you're correct. And table names aren't capitalized. Yes, that is correct. But, um, They're all the same. so again, because you're missing the contributor role? Yes. Then. All these things will have to be modified a little bit. Yes, okay. mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we'll move on to that. But part of, part of what we have is it's, it's flexible, right? We have you know the ability to add privileges to, to roles to users, so that it's it's flexible and scalable down the road. Right. Yeah. Changing privileges is the role. Terms. That's a two-step thing. Why not have roles that have fixed privileges and just adjust the well, people that, accordingly? That's, you could do that, but do lose flexibility, I think. Um, are you going to let them do that, or are you going to have to do it developmentally? And that's the that's that's maintainability of this thing after. after. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, I know. wouldn't turn the newspaper people loose on that. <laughs> no. Well, no. Well, that's where you have separations of responsibility of an admin, that, you know, what, what's their job going to be? Um, sure enough. You know, so. But they're going to have to know what the hell they're doing. That's... With, uh, you just can't pick the head guy over there and make him out no. and no, turn no, him no, loose no. on him. Okay, go to the next one. we got to hurry up. Yeah, so uh, just um, here we have a quick illustration of the user uh, you know, that's uh, 
connect to an article, basically they'd be the, um, uh, in this case, the um, author of that article. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have users in a different role, uh, you know, would comment uh, that also go towards an article, or same with blogs. You know, uh, Google was also telling us that, you know, you'd like to have a kind of editorial type stuff where you can have you limited it to 255 characters. A comment. Yeah, that's that's. I would change it. Does that look like a bar chart up there? Yeah. Change it to a text. Text. Yeah, I was looking at that. <clears throat> that's arbitrary size. Right? Yeah. And you using search features. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 That's one of the reasons. Okay. Next. And in notifications, we have a kind of a join table there for notifications to our user and uh, article are kind of joined together so you can see whether or not they want to be notified. So it's kind of like uh, you can use that table as like a favorites as well. So you can say, you know, um, you know this is uh, this user is kind of linked to this article. And if they want to be notified, then, you know, you can. But you can also use notifications to send out to your campus community. Yeah. To say we're generating a new yeah. web That's live true, yeah. web live on like a generic, um, more of like a generic type, uh, and that the, the admin would or editor would put out to the community saying if you have any projects related to yes, yeah. You got something, Thomas? The user ID looks in each of these, but you can eliminate that as a whole new join. Is there some sort of form you can't do that? I'm um, kidding, just a question. I'm sorry. So here you have it where you can join a notification to an article, mm -hmm. which has an ID, and the article also has the user ID. So you could. You oh, that's user ID. You are correct. Now, are you. Well, your... so yes. I know there, there is a reason for that. So that article, so the foreign key there is to the user, which is saying that, that in this case, that user is would be the, art, is the author of that article. So it's kind of different. It's intentional. Yes. That's the, that's the answer I was looking for. Okay. Uh, with the creation of a new software, there's going to be risks, both customer and technical. This is just a brief overview. We're going to go into each one of those uh, briefly to, to save time. This is just the risk matrix. So you can see the probability by impact and where each of these risks falls. Well, too many risks. <laughs> uh, the first one would be customer risk. and This, this is going to time out at... 12.50, okay. but a new session for the next group will start at 12.51, so yeah, the okay. end of this presentation will be on the link, so he, Eric and Diamond could join the link for the blue team to finish watching this presentation once this okay. one ends. Yeah, it's a Diamond and yeah. to just so join that. Through it. Would you still want me to speed through Keep it a little talking, bit? Yes. Okay, okay. Um, we're just going to forego the impact and probability then. You can look at that later. This uh, customer risk would be that the customer just doesn't adopt to our delivered solution. And the and you mitigate that through Agile. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, that yeah. wasn't awesome. Yeah, exactly. You beat me to it, Agile. <laughs> and and the Agile and case study. The second uh, customer risk is pretty much new software. It might be intimidating for users. Um, they might not have a developed skill set. And we're going to... Uh, tap into ODU's. Oh my gosh, they're gonna be happy. They're not real uh, heavy savvy. We we want to uh, tap into ODU's faculty resources and uh, consult on design experts and make sure you know that we deliver a high quality user experience. Uh, next one would be pretty much templates are not pretty enough. The templates that are are generated with our our product and, and we can't do a lot to control that. Yeah, we mitigate it pretty much by just getting the. Uh, Best, learning best practices and consulting with design experts, and also by keeping the public in, uh, involved and by giving them incentives for feedback and trying to keep them in the loop. Uh, this one's pretty much readers do not revisit. We want to keep readers around. We want retention. We want revisit. Core risk four is uh, the existing architecture might not prove, or it might prove difficult to add uh, visualization elements, and it's pretty much the same as previous uh, technical risk. Just kind of anticipate the problems and use best practices and research on other plugins to see uh, solutions that are available. Uh, T5 is security issues with interaction points between WordPress and the other interfaces, and this is just follow, the mitigation is just follow WordPress API and 
development guidelines and utilize WordPress authentication and security features. Five, is the security you're going to provide with this product better than what they have now? Sounds like any. Hey, it's better than what they have, but it should also complement, if yeah, not, yeah. if anything else. Well, I'd say we're we're going to enforce, like we're going to create roles and enforce actually using logins and like security <laughs> features Make that are there. Here. Um, yeah, and so you could do the my ODU. But this is hosted outside of ODU. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, it's hosted out GoDaddy. Yeah, it's GoDaddy. Yeah. We actually yeah, discussed that. The last technical risk is that Monarch Precious doesn't function uh, at a desirable speed, and you we mitigate that through optimizing and streamlining the current deployment, utilizing caching, compression, minified uh, JavaScript and CSS resources. And, uh, yeah. And... Diamond is going to conclude the presentation, if he's there. All right. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I had a question for Aaron before he comes up. Yeah. I'm I, I, I have call him Diamond. Is that, a, is that a vodka tonic you've been sipping on during this thing? Or, uh, <laughs> no, no, just, just, just water. <laughs> my speaking voice fresh. I want to know who the guy is to by your left ear. Oh, he's, I'll move. He's, he's a man. And the cat. cat. And in cat. In a French cafe in Paris. Okay. <laughs> Better than Apparently the they let animals roam around their cafes. All right. Sorry. I've been staring at him, wondering <laughs> what the uh, connection was. <laughs> All right, Diamond, you ready to conclude? Sure. You guys can't hear me, right? You can yes. Hear me, right? Okay, cool. So in conclusion... Um, Monarch Press is a tool for university news organizations to use that will help produce dynamic and high impact content. And you know, this content will engage readers and keep them coming back to consume more and more uh, news media. And it'll be extremely easy to interface with. So anyone who doesn't have, you know, any technical knowledge or only a little bit, you know, they'll still be able to uh, get whatever they need to do done. And there will be a seamless integration with uh, WordPress, which is, you know, one of the most widely deployed content management systems. And last but not least, uh, Monarch Press will utilize free and open source software to meet the needs of organizations with limited resources. And this will help, you know, news organizations like Monarch Press to, you know, compete in the race to provide the most captivating content possible. And uh, okay. that's our presentation. Just the glossary.